It's a spooky Top of the Pops 2 Halloween special in 40 minutes. First on BBC Two with some strong language. Have I got a bit more news for you? Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Omid Jalili. In the news this week, as he heads home after losing the Brazilian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton shrugs off suggestions that his driving shows a lack of experience. <laughs> In York... Uh, I can't keep this up. Uh, <laughs> do it in my own voice. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Me. Sorry. <laughs> in York, the entire Sherbet marketing board is forced to resign after the broadcast of its Make Sherbet Cool TV advert. <laughs> <laughs> and after only a few months at number 10, there are signs that Gordon Brown's wife is uncomfortable being in the media spotlight. On Ian Hislop's team tonight is an actor and writer who used to help with speeches for the Conservatives and about whom The Guardian recently wrote, if anyone could make Ian Duncan Smith's speeches come alive, it was him. No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> please welcome <laughs> Julian Fellows. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight is a broadcaster who once told a journalist, I'm going back to radio. I've had enough of being Uncle Fun on TV, which left the way clear for Ian to make the role very much his own. <laughs> <laughs> Please will you welcome Mr Danny Baker! Thank you. And we start with round one. Uh, Paul and Danny, have a look at this. Oh, the Roadrunner's been down there, yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, California's on fire, um, yep. that's the sun behind the cloud. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how it started, but they've got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling me to get his finger out, or the gerbil, whatever yep. the case may be, and, uh, and you can see it from outer space. And, and uh, uh, Joan Rivers' makeup being dropped on it to see if that does anything. <laughs> so that's what's happening. California's on fire. It is a sort of perfect news story, though, because mm. it's, it's a disaster. It's huge and enormous, and it's got celebrities. Yeah. Mm. And, they, and, and they suddenly have, you know, Jane Seymour and people running for the coast. So that adds that final spin. So all the newspapers have grabbed it up as the story of the week. week. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it is that small pleasure of a, a major film actor saying, and behind me, my house is burning, and you're going, ah. <laughs> 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 oh, if God. It, if yeah. it was a film and they run into the coast, the twist would be they just meet a tsunami coming in towards them. <laughs> <laughs> Which puts out the fire at the same time and everybody's happy. And everyone's happy. But yeah. they said it's like it's the temperature over there is like... Because it's very close to the big towns, about 140 in some yeah. well, of the I, towns. Well, I think the official uh, p uh, policeman of California, the official policeman of California... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Officer Devil. Yeah, he said it's like, uh, it's like really hot. <laughs> <laughs> What was the red stuff they were through? Is that just the kind of anti it, it, it was strawberry cocaine for people in real emergency. They get real trouble. <laughs> in real emergency. It's anti-fire powder. Is it? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually fire powder. Well, I, I, I presume it's not petrol. <laughs> <laughs> it is a catastrophe, you know. And we know it's it terrible. is. terrible. Because President Bush has actually turned up. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> he's declared himself a disaster area. Yeah. Hasn't he? <laughs> but it's not like New Orleans, because California's got quite a lot of white people in it, so the president turned up straight away. <laughs> Apparently nearly a million people have been evacuated mm -hmm. and the fires destroyed a number of the most, of the most historic buildings in, uh, in Hollywood, uh, some of them dating back to the 1990s. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, but can you tell me, why is this of particular interest to Olivia Newton-John? Wasn't she one of the ones that had to run out? I mean, it is terrible. Oh, I take it all back. No, I know. No, no, it is no, terrible. No, no, I mean, we, no. When what, we sit here making grounded. jokes, it is awful, actually. <laughs> and you've got to work with some of them. Well, sir, he, he, he actually sells the rights to his book, which we're going to talk about so much. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a book out? I've got a book out, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. 
It's all about sight. <laughs> Have we turned into the shopping channel? <laughs> Well, uh, going back to Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. <laughs> did her fire? Did the fire in her house start ironically because a, a, a big, huge barrel of grease in her in her cellar caught fire, <laughs> and she was in the film Grease, and that's why it's ironic. <laughs> now, we can't make jokes about specific people who've really lost their houses. No. No. Okay. Well, let's. No. Uh, I've I heard that Bluton Blonde, <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Bluton Blonde. Olivia Bluton Blonde's lo lost her house. <laughs> yeah. Which is quite ironic because there was a barrel of bleach in the attic, <laughs> <laughs> and that went up. Where the tie wearers, that gives us a responsibility in this kind mm. of thing. Oh, is that right? It looks like you're attending the reading of a will over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're right. We should take a sombre moment to remember that uh, certain yes. people like Sting experienced, apparently, a mandatory evacuation. <laughs> <laughs> as Trudy insists upon it, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, what's Jane Seymour's husband doing? Oh, no, I know that. He stayed in the house illegally, to quote her, in order to try and kind of save things. It didn't seem to me to be madly sensible, but I suppose he knew what he was doing. Uh, apparently, she told a reporter, the fire is close to our home. My husband is illegally there fighting the flames. <laughs> and the measure of her concern for her husband can be gained from the fact that she gave that comment on her way to a TV studio to take part in Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> well, apparently, headline writers have gone into overdrive with yeah. The Independent uh, going with... California burning, mm -hmm. the mirror plumping for California <laughs> burning, and the sun running with, guess what, that's right, Malibu melts. <laughs> but most importantly, what is the Iranian angle to this story? <laughs> well, let, let me make one thing clear. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not here in America, but I know I'm a, I'm a British Iranian, which mm. means, which means I, I suppose half of me has a natural hatred for anything American, and the other half, exactly the same. <laughs> But the Iranian angle, apparently, yeah. is that Castle Karshan, which is a, a priceless stately home owned by the daughter of a former Iranian oil minister, has gone up in flames as well. Ah, oh, you can see where the oil is. <laughs> and according to The Sun, she saved her jewellery and some rare memorabilia, including Elvis's old army trousers. <laughs> okay. He got around, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but, but why have we included this story? It's very simple because the Iranian oil minister, yep. the Iranian oil minister, oil he dances minister. like this. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> no, let's stick with it. No, 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 no. Let's take this. I to think the we end. might be dreaming this episode. <laughs> <laughs> But the question is, how has the governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, reacted? He said it's going to get worse before it gets better. One of those terrible phrases politicians use, wasn't it that? Actually, he says here, the disaster is uh, of such severity and magnitude that uh, effective response is beyond the capability of the state and local governments. In yeah. other words, we have to get out of here. Are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you auditioning tonight for something else? <laughs> Uh, and closer to home, what did Chris Evans accidentally destroy this week? A uh, microwave. He put a, a jacket potato in it and uh, under the new BBC laws, there's not even supposed to be anything like that. And uh, the fire brigade were called and Radio 2 was closed down for a while while three fire engines turned up to see this overheated small potato. <laughs> and the meal was no good too. Sorry, Chris. But anyway, <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's what it true. was. He, he cooked did. a jacket potato in a microwave and the fire brigade turned up. The fire brigade turned up. <laughs> Are you saying this is the British version of the disaster in California? This <laughs> <laughs> is a burnt a potato. <laughs> we feel oh, your yeah. pain, brothers. Yeah. We feel your pain. Everybody flock to the coast. <laughs> it's our only hope. How did it? Pick, how did the smoke thing pick it up? If it's just a cooking potato, how did they know? Does it have no potatoes? <laughs> what is this? Do funny voice now? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, your box Are you really good. Fun <laughs> <of that? laughs> no. no. Now, Kerry Grant from North by Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah, understand, Inspector. Like Someone tried to kill me last night. <laughs> so which sweet says. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do any voices, Ian? Yeah. I could do Alan Bennett, I suppose, but. Yeah! I don't... Hey! I don't suppose That's anyone right. wants to listen to Alan at this time. <laughs> <laughs> It He's better later, isn't he, when you've got a cup of cocoa yeah. and maybe... <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a voice from you yet, Julian. Well, He's been doing it all night. What are you talking about? <laughs>
So it's the huge fire that has swept through California. Before the firefighters arrived, desperate Californian homeowners tried to douse the flames with whatever they could get their hands on. Organic carrot juice, pomegranate and jojoba <laughs> vitamin drink. <laughs> and in one case, water. <laughs> The fire did a million dollars worth of damage to the home of actress and singer Cher. Her buttocks melted. <laughs> also this week, George Bush announced new sanctions on Iraq as the latest step in the ongoing process of regime change. The US will remove... Oh, did you say Iraq or Iran? I think you got that wrong. Can we go back? Does it go matter? Back. It mm. does, actually. <laughs> Also this week, George Bush announced new sanctions on Iran as the latest step in the ongoing process of regime change. The US uh, will remove President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and replace him with someone far easier to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Ian and Gillian, here's yeah. yours. Uh, that's people trying to either leave the country or get out. This is not a polish shop selling different kinds of polish. This is... It's a a polish shop. This, this is, is being sensitive, considering the drama we're facing in this country. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is immigration and crowding, and the little old woman with the slippers on was because we're all now going to live another 17 years or something or other, and so it's all about overcrowding, and the prison stuff is that there's now... Gordon Brown has announced in his inimitable way that all... Foreign prisoners are to be sent home, except they're not, and everything's terrible. Absolutely correct. The uh, population of Britain uh, is forecast to rise from 61 million to 71 million by 2031. But they've made these predictions in the past and have been wrong. Mm. Are they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. And also, as you suggested there with the jacket potatoes, I mean, they're going to cull a lot of people, aren't they? Because <laughs> the potatoes blows up in the microwave, the fire brigade are called, somebody stuck up a tree, they didn't get rescued, you know. What, what Swings the, and roundabouts. What was, yeah. the, what was the prison footage there, then? Yeah, what was the, the prison? prison footage? was about the immigrant He's going to prisons. explain it again. I'm going to have to say it all again. <laughs> well, but if they're turfing out all the they illegal... They said you'd get more repeats on the beep. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> they have got special... Two special prisons have been allocated for the reception of foreign prisoners on their way to deportation. What can we learn from the Philippines about how inmates should be conducting themselves in prison. The inmates dance to the latest hits and show everyone they're happy inmates. Let's have a look. Move on. Let's see how the papers have been uh, helping their readers to get a handle on this situation um, by giving handy comparisons, apparently. The Mail started out saying that the increase will add the equivalent of a city the size of London. Then they decided that wasn't enough, saying later the increase will be the equivalent of two cities the size of London. <laughs> the Express kicked off with the figure is equivalent to three cities <laughs> the size of London. Then they decided there was no point in messing about. It's the equivalent of the population of Scotland, Wales <laughs> and Northern Ireland <laughs> all moving to England <laughs> and camping in your sock drawer! <laughs> According to the Express, what do we need to do every day for the next 20 years? Well, you obviously read about Diana, that's one. <laughs> <the Express. laughs> uh, that's is there just... still no hope? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it add a town the size of Sunderland? I read that. <laughs> on top of, add a town the size of Sunderland on top of Sunderland. <laughs> so in 10 years' time, Sunderland will be 500 feet high. <laughs> yes. It's actually to build 260 new homes every day. But the government is proposing new immigration controls. What are they known as? Immigration controls. <laughs> <laughs> new brackets. <laughs> is the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is the government's prediction that Britain's population could, in the next decade, increase by five million, unless, of course, Russell Brand is sterilised. <laughs> The Tories are promising to deal with Britain's massive backlog of illegal immigrants. First on the plane will be the Vikings, closely followed by those shifty-looking Huguenots. <laughs> and so, to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers. We have no idea. <laughs> have a guess. I Is it guess. another of those top stories, a woman had a towel? <laughs> <laughs> it's close. This is the Japanese designer who has come up with a skirt that opens up to make the wearer look like a drinks vending machine. <laughs> 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 a 
you do. As you do. And why would anyone want to look like a drinks vending machine? Uh, amid growing anxiety about street crime, the, the, the skirt allows the wearer to blend into the background <laughs> and hide from muggers <laughs> rather than fight back. Let's see, let's see how it works yeah. here. Yeah. Here she is, a perfectly ordinary, if slightly rectangular skirt. Yeah. Uh, here she is, mid-transformation. <laughs> and here she is, blending seamlessly into the background. <laughs> And there she is. There she is in the street. I can't but surely, it, it, surely the risk is that the mugger is going to finish mugging, feel a little bit thirsty, say, oh, I'd like a drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently the designer has some other anti-crime designs. Um, can anyone guess what they might be? Oh. Um, stay at home disguised as a fridge. <laughs> a car. You can stand in the middle of a busy high street. <laughs> Close. Uh, there's the manhole bag, apparently, a purse that can, that can hide your valuables by unfolding to look like a round sewer cover. Here it is. <laughs> what? Uh, you, you, it's a manhole bag. You lay it on the street with your valuables inside and the thieves <laughs> just walk by without noticing it. And as long as your valuables are a thin crust pizza. <laughs> The backpack, which transforms uh, to make your child look like a Japanese-style fire hydrant. Uh, now you see him. Now you. Oh well. But, uh, <laughs> <not quite. laughs> oh, look, look at him. And seven nuns dressed as bicycles next to them. <laughs> In fact, nothing is what it seems there. That was the Japanese designer who's come up with a novel way to help people hide from muggers. There are plans to introduce a British version of the vending machine dress, which will be exactly the same, with the addition of an out-of-order sign on the front. <laughs> <laughs> Things on buzzers, teams! Oh! That's... This has got to be rugby, isn't it? It's an upside-down English rugby player. We played South Africa and we didn't win, and uh, everybody was unhappy about that, although they were a little bit happy, because when we first played South Africa, we played very badly, and... Oh, this... <laughs> Oh, this is the unfortunate incident where somebody's head was used as a ball in the World Cup final. <laughs> um, Johnny Wilkinson, I don't know who that head is. No, is that Prince William? That. That's not is Prince William. What's Prince William? Of, of which royal family? He was, he was doing his bit for his country. <laughs> <laughs> He's clearly black. No, it's, <laughs> Prince William is black. <laughs> the head that you can see there is actually Lewis Hamilton. None of us recognise Lewis Hamilton. That's terrible. We well, so, don't usually see him like that, do you? No, you no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's Prince William. We don't. No, you don't. Mind you, just his head sticking out of the car. Maybe that's all there is to him. You just pick him up, put him down like that. <laughs> that's what makes him so special. He's lightweight. He doesn't weigh anything as the car goes faster. <laughs> There was controversy around the try that never was. Uh, what was all the fuss about? It was a try that never was. Yeah. <laughs> he, had, um, he had one leg on the pitch and the other one in a hot air balloon, and that's not allowed. <laughs> that's not allowed. He was floating 15 feet above the pitch and dropped the ball over like that, and him and Passport 2 then went to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> It only took them about half an hour to decide whether it yeah. was or not. Yeah. Well, partly because uh, they were worried, because in the picture it looked like the ball was um, the head of Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously the referee hadn't seen that before, so he said, gosh, I wonder if you're allowed to do that under the rules. You're allowed to score with the head of a, a racing driver. <laughs> and they consulted and they found you're not. Well, there's no rule that says you cannot use the head of a Formula One racing driver <laughs> instead of a ball, because otherwise no. the, rules, the rule book would be endless. You, 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 <laughs> you can't dress as old Mother Riley. You, 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 you yeah, can't play a banjo, watch banjo while whistling in the dark. I mean, it's a whole number of rules. Uh, now, Lewis Hamilton also, he missed yes. out on the Formula One championship, but he's more upset about something else. According to The Sun, following a complaint from shoppers, uh, he is to lose his private roped off parking space at his local oh. Asda in Stevenage. <laughs> How much shopping can you get in the back of one of those cars anyway? I mean, it's not the end of it, is it? <laughs> Perhaps his wife takes him around in one of those, you know, one of those sort of things that you have at posh dinners when they reveal the sort of what the dish is and the oh, silver yeah. dough. She takes him around in one of those and just lifts it up and says, more cheese, and puts it down. <laughs> That's how he's, he's taken around, as though, in one of those little things like that. So not to frighten people. <laughs> he's the, the correct dancer. <laughs> now, Julian, are you uh, familiar with the term wags? Wags? I'm mad about wags, and I'm told that we're all now to take them as role models. Mm. They've all got A-levels and degrees, and they've all got the most fantastic expectations and ambitions, and they are excellent role models for young girls. Which is absolutely correct, yes. Who's the top of the heap? Wag wife. By the way, is it, should it be wags is wives... And, and girlfriends. I think that's wrong. Nobody has a wife and a girl. It should be wives or girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> you see?
Who, who's top of the heap, wag-wise? Well, Posh Spice, presumably. Yeah. No. Um, no. 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 no, it's not. No. It's not um, Posh Spice. Is it Colleen? It's, uh, it's Colleen. No, it's, mm. Is it Colleen? It's Colleen I knew she was blonde. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's blonde yeah, and she yeah. has ten GCSEs, apparently. Mm. Really? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Top of the heap. I think that's very reassuring to know. Yeah. <laughs> so who's who's bottom of the heap? I don't know. Posh. Posh. Posh's, 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 yeah, apparently. Oh, How many has she got? Uh, apparently she is... Uh, Victoria Beckham is, didn't get many GCSEs, but the Learning and uh, Skills Council warns that the odds of following in her footsteps are incredibly thin. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Mind you, she has other gifts. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, she's made a great success of it. Yeah. I rather admire her, actually, because Others. she's spun a comparatively minor talent into an, being an extraordinary role model. I think hats off to her. I do, I think. I think both pair of them. He did it. What's he supposed to do? Come back and sit with, you know, all the old readers' wives on Match of the Day and be manager of Nottingham Forest? No, yeah. they won. They moved out to LA. They're worth bundles. Mm. Well done to the pair of them. Mm. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Applause at that point, usually. One whoop would do at the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say string them up. <laughs> this was England's hat trick of sporting misery, losing out at football, rugby, and motor racing. After the Rugby World Cup final in Paris, they estimate 20,000 bottles of lager were drunk, after which Prince Harry moved on to shorts. <laughs> Princes William and Harry were on hand to console the team, having had plenty of experience at comforting older men who'd never quite made it to the top spot. Fingers <laughs> 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 on buzzers, teams. Um, this is the uh, new card swipe system for hospitals. <laughs> <laughs> Where, 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 what is that? Well, well, <laughs> I mean, the, the situation rather than the man. Um, this is the, the news that uh, desperate publicity-seeking hotel chain Travel Lodge were plagued by 400 naked sleepwalkers in the past year, a sevenfold increase on 2006. A 400 to... naked sleepwalkers? No. <laughs> they sleepwalk into the hotel and <laughs> organise a room and then wake up thinking, my God, what am I staying at Travel Lodge for? <laughs> Well, according to the hotel chain, many sleepwalk naked into the reception area, saying that they wanted to check out... <laughs> but who can blame them? Uh... Look at her. Uh, she's obviously thinking, not easy, and I'm checking in with you. <laughs> <laughs> she might be saying the same thing, the bloke with the glasses. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy fell to the midnight snack and he's come down for a knob of butter. <laughs> when you want to show off, you want to show yourself to advantage, though. I'm not sure he's really bringing that off. No, not really. Well, you think a blazer would help? <laughs> <laughs> it always works for me. <laughs> Who else was naked this week when they weren't supposed to be? The Pope. <laughs> his address at St Peter's Square. A little wind came up, tunic over his head. <laughs> People pointed yeah, to the nearest travel lodge. It's apparently Australian barmaid Luana oh. de Favre. She exposed her breasts. Oh, yes, yeah, front of the Guardian, as I remember it. Used yeah. them to crush beer, beer cans, cans before getting a colleague to balance spoons on the exposed breasts. The pair were fined $1,500. It wasn't, presumably, it wasn't in her drawing room because she'd have been allowed to do it there. The idea that this woman has a drawing room. <laughs> <laughs> she may have a drawing room. <laughs> You allow your maiden servants to crush me again between their breasts cans. at the end of dinner. Uh, I think we'll leave the ladies to <laughs> crush beer cans on their breasts. <laughs> Very good, Julian. We'll, yes, the we'll go and have the port now. This is the news that desperate publicity-seeking hotel chain Travel Lodge were plagued by 400 naked sleepwalkers in the past year. Travel Lodge prides itself on its affordability and boasts that it has three simple price bands. Super Saver, Saver and Tramp. <laughs> Super Tramp. Hey! When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. Miracle, I was beautiful, magical. <laughs> now, fingers on buzzers again, <laughs> <Another> please, <one>. teams. <laughs> yes, Ian? 
That's Inspector John Yates, mm -hmm. the man who was looking into the cash for honours. Mm -hmm. um, that me standing because... behind him as a policeman? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> Is that what I do during the day? <laughs> he admitted that, that pressure had been put on him by number 10. That was the point, wasn't it? Yes, he said... Well, that... the MPs took him into the committee and obviously they were furious because this is a policeman trying to suggest MPs have been up to no good. Mm -hmm. And they're jolly angry about that, particularly as he was right. Um, <laughs> and then they said, will you name the people who didn't cooperate? And he indicated it was someone, he couldn't say who, who lived in number 10. Mm. <laughs> First name Tony, second name beginning with B. Um, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> there was plenty of evidence and uh, the Criminal Prosecution Service decided not to prosecute. There was a man who said, look, I gave him a whole load of money. They said I was going to become a peer and I didn't. I'm Jolly Cross. Mm. For most of us, that would constitute evidence. <laughs> but I'm being naive here, but haven't political parties always done this? Haven't they always sold Yeah, people honours? have always murdered people. It doesn't mean it's right. Uh, <laughs> but but this was the, the arguments seemed, of the committee. But the MPs seem to be surprised by this, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yes, no, they were amazed. Mm. One of the MPs actually said, this has always gone on. How dare you try and stop it? <laughs> My great-great-grandfather was made a peer, but eventually he fell into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> It's Yates of the Yard, Cash for Honours detective, who was himself the subject of an interrogation this week when he was hauled before a select committee. The investigation was carried out under the uh, Honours Act of 1925, which I think you'll find was a private member's bill introduced by Ming Campbell. Uh, <laughs> the investigation was exceptionally thorough. According to the Daily Telegraph, Scotland Yard even went as far as reading the diary of Labour donor Sir Christopher Evans, which included the entry, Exploded Potato Today. <laughs> Means at the end of this round, Ian and Julian have three, and Paul and, and uh, Danny have three as well. <laughs> hey, thank you, oh, no. uh, Danny. Well <laughs> it's time now for the odd one out round. Uh, just one between you this week. Uh, Tony Blair's grandmother, Nick Clegg MP, Sammy the Seagull, and Thornton's chief chocolatier Barry Colenso. Ah, oh. I yeah. think it's that that Tony Blair's grandmother is going to vote Lib Dem, or indeed anyone except Gordy, next time round. Nick Clegg is Lib Dem and is trying to be leader. And this guy with the chocolate, there was an article in the newspaper that if you ate chocolate, you lived longer, which is going to be necessary if you want to see the Lib Dems come in. <laughs> and then the seagull is the odd one out. What do you think it's to do with shoplifting? Or going into shops and stealing stuff? Yes. Because... Who? Sammy uh, de Seagull. Sammy de Seagull, mm. uh, uh, who's a successful shoplifter. Yeah, uh, it's all the S's. Yeah. Is the correct answer. Yeah. Yay! Look at that. Yeah. 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 He's the odd one out. He's the odd one out. Ah. The, odd one out. Ah. The, odd one out. the guy in the right hand corner, the chocolatier guy, he didn't steal anything, but he sort of messed with somebody else's product and sort of got a hold of their chocolates and sort of made them look less chocolatey and less inviting. Uh, he quit his role in disgrace last week after being spotted tampering with the display in a rival shop. CCTV footage showed Mr Colenso methodically gripping several chocolate displays. The store manager found £63.50 worth of damage caused by truffles being squashed. <laughs> it's always the same with these chocolatiers. <laughs> Has he been accused of shoplifting? He's been accused of some kind of vandalism. So that's not the same as shoplifting, then? Thus making mm. the odd one out wrong and us having the points. Yes, and we're. <laughs> okay, justify yourself and make it quick. Well, <laughs> they've all been accused of vandalism, apart from Sammy the Seagull, now. who was accused of shoplifting. Well, he was. What we said, shoplifting. Right. You said he was the only successful shoplifter. He was. We didn't say he was an unsuccessful shoplifter. <laughs> That so, implies the others were shoplifters. Well, no, so, we, uh, yeah, that, uh, that, that's, uh, you're going to plant words in my mouth. I said he was a successful shoplifter. I left the others to uh, blow on the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> the shoplifting, surely, is the point. You're but, right. Sammy the Seagull is the odd one out because he has not committed any acts of vandalism. He has, however, been caught shoplifting. And would you like to see some footage of a seagull shoplifting? Here we go. <laughs> the middle. <laughs> yeah, did I, oh, it's 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 today. Yeah, just yeah, a little produce yeah, today. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> he was sent in by his older brother, another seagull. <laughs> <laughs> in his youth, Lib Dem leadership contender Nick Clegg burned down a greenhouse full of valuable cacti, and now he's destroyed an ancient Ming. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tony Blair's grandmother, Mary Blair, she daubed communist graffiti on the walls in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> so they've all been accused of vandalism, apart from Sammy the Seagull, who was accused of shoplifting Doritos. Uh, the manufacturers of Doritos are Walker's Crisps, and according to a spokesman, we haven't ruled out Sammy the Seagull replacing Gary Lineker in our adverts, <laughs> but hopefully, match of the day. <laughs> Which means at the end of this round, it's uh, Ian and Julian with three, and Danny and Paul with four. Oh, 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 it's time now for the missing words round, which oh, include okay. headlines from this week's guest publication, yes. the Journal of the International Brick Collectors Association. <laughs> now, I should say at this point, I collect bricks, and I keep them together in the form of a house. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with Mona Lisa's missing eyebrows what? Yes, actually the, the phrase is Mona Lisa's missing eyebrows just like Dennis Healy's. <laughs> <laughs> they were enormous apparently, absolutely, and the original pain, no wonder she's laughing, I mean, you've got to have something. Got to have it. Is it turn up on a horse in Newmarket? <laughs> <laughs> More than she can say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> The answer is Mona Lisa's missing eyebrows are revealed by camera. Experts have uncovered in the painting something that uh, explains her missing eyebrows, a chip pan. <laughs> <laughs> Next, before becoming brick collectors, many of our members what? Are entombed in a mausoleum of doom. <laughs> We're married. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> The correct answer is collected bottles. <laughs> According to Jibka, that's the Journal of the International Brick Collectors Association, if you need it, <laughs> as if you need me to tell you that. Bottles and bricks go together perfectly, particularly if you're at a James Blunt concert. <laughs> uh, OK, let's move on to the next one. I was an idiot to what, says Delia. Make a concrete omelette. <laughs> she couldn't toss it. <laughs> recommend Tabasco as eye drops. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually by Norwich City. Well, Delia Smith famously laid into Norwich supporters for not showing enough support, uh, leading fans to stick two fingers up at her while keeping the other 12 in their pockets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, flush, struck and rodded what? It's a normal night out in Newcastle. <laughs> Is it Mrs. Stewart tells all? <laughs> <laughs> the three unfunniest Marx Brothers. <laughs> Our three common masonry joints. Yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. Well, We sort of said that, didn't we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Next, broccoli juice, just the job to what? Stop. Wash down a brick. <laughs> Broccoli being really powdery. <laughs> <laughs> Make you flush, struck and rotted. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is stop sun lovers overcooking. Uh, broccoli juice is an effective sunblock. Scientists coated hairless mice in broccoli juice. Something, something, they, something they picked up from a Heston Blumenthal recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what for first wind-powered school? Breeze blocks, breeze blocks, breeze, breeze blocks, breeze blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's, it's, it's honour. Honour. No, yeah, they won an award in the yes. primary schools. Exactly right. Uh, in fact, schools minister Ed Balls presented the environmental award to Cassett Primary. Uh, a year six people uh, took a while to make the acceptance speech, partly through nerves, but mainly because he was still laughing at Ed Balls' name. <laughs> Next, Cecil Poston discovered what when he cleared out a ditch? This is Poston. <laughs> <laughs> you better be home looking after the kids. <laughs> oh, Meaning Saxon, of life. A Saxon brooch or something. Uh, no, it's bricks. No, it's actually an interest in bricks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I started collecting bricks that were thrown through my window. They had notes on saying, you brick-collecting freak. They were playing right <laughs> into my hands. <laughs> And finally, pigeons force couple to what? To move out of their own home. To move to another area. To seek life on the sea. 
<laughs> to impersonate caraway seeds on their own mantelpiece. <laughs> the answer is to Quick Step from Ballet. Uh, this concerns the Bristol Hippodrome, which has an unfortunate problem with pigeons getting into the auditorium and, and causing trouble. According to disgruntled audience member Duncan Potter, during the first part, we could hear a dull thudding noise. That's the ballet, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Ballet's very popular in Bristol, but in Iran, we dance like this. <laughs> so there you have it. So let's look at the final scores. And they are that Ian and Julian have... Uh, no, the, uh, let's start again. Uh, let's, so... <laughs> Do you know who anybody is? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is an Iranian equal opportunities yeah. thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is actually, a, I should say, tonight is actually a very special United Nations cultural exchange mm. thing where tonight I'm here and as we speak, Jim Davidson's being buggered in Iraq right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a special night. That's a tough audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough crowd. So the final scores are that Paul and Danny have four, but Ian and Julian have seven. But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Uh, Ian and Julian, you have this. Oh, that's Julian at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Daily Telegraph. It's their new ad campaign. They're getting with it. <laughs> Younger readers will like a cup of tea with their Telegraph. Courtney <laughs> Cox not bothered by Californian fires. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew how to turn the taps off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't drink my way out of here. <laughs> OK, uh, Paul and Danny, you get that. Is the, is the pilot saying, would the very tall man get off our plane <laughs> <laughs> so we can take off? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at me, me cock's a jumbo jet. <laughs> uh, is that the cheapest Ryanair seat outside the plane? <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Julian Fellows, Paul Merton and Danny Baker, and I leave you with the news that as George Bush imposes sanctions on Iran, its president continues to deny that his country possesses any nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Inspecting her troops at Balmoral, Her Majesty eagerly anticipates the traditional switching on of the wind machine. <laughs> and at the Notting Hill Carnival, a police sniffer dog goes undercover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night! <laughs>